a big fat panda. I'm not a big fat panda. I'm the big fat panda. Skadoosh. Tell me about the family dinner. Hello and welcome to England. This is my ancestral home. As you will see, we all sit at a table with only chairs on three of the four sides. The meal in the middle is a traditional meal we will have every evening in England and it is roast suckling pig. So in most English gardens you will find a horde of little piggies and we will quite frequently barbecue them every evening. They're served with a selection of fruits because England is well known for its scurvy. And you'll see the flooring. All English houses do have this brown and cream checkerboard. It's the law. In fact, if you don't have this and you have shank pile, you are literally putting the village stocks and fruit is thrown at you. No lie. You will see the minstrels in the gallery. They're playing music. Everybody has a minstrel in their property. And they serenade you as you dine on your roast pig. And you will see all the servants waiting for you. It's quite well known that Henry VIII was... I don't believe you, Michelle. It's true. Henry VIII was actually well known for his eating. He had a vomitarium by the side of him. So when he had eaten too much food, he literally threw up in the special bowl and it was one of the staff, the servants, who had to come and get the bowl, empty it, and then bring it back and empty it again. Uh, okay, obviously, obviously her flight has not done well for her. <laughs> this is Michelle Young of the Disney Dream Girls podcast here from the UK. Yeah. Who, if this is her first time in Walt Disney World? No, John, it's not my first time in Walt Disney World. And I know who the voices of Liberty are. <laughs> I asked her who the voices of Liberty were and she was like, really? You see this? Hello and welcome to Big Fat Panda show number 38. Wow, things are definitely going on here. That was Michelle Young from a Disney Dream Girls podcast. Thank you, uh, Michelle. Our guest for this uh, month is Aaron Wallace. He's a Disney super fan and author, a really good author. I'll be talking more about him later. Let me thank my exclusive sponsor, David's Vacation Club Rentals at... <laughs> DVCRentals.com. You owe it to yourself if you're planning a trip to Disney, or maybe you weren't planning a trip to Disney, and now you can afford a trip to Disney in a really nice accommodation. Check out DVCRentals.com. So, we have a new princess. We have a new Latina princess. Uh, princess Elena of Avalor. I was unaware of her existence. I thought Sophia was a Latina princess, but what do I know? I'm Italian. I don't know these things. But friends are teaching me. She had a royal welcome in front of the castle. This video actually is my uh, biggest viewed video within this time, meaning it has 500,000 views, half a million in like seven days. It's crazy. So if you want to check out the video, you can go to bigfatpanda.com. But let's take a quick look at how Cinderella welcomes Princess, of El Princess Elena of Avalor into her kingdom. Please join us in extending a very warm welcome to Crown Princess Elena of Avalor. <laughs> Welcome. We are pleased to meet you. And I've always wanted to meet you. What a beautiful kingdom you have here. Es muy maravilloso. Oh, thank you. It's a wonderful place to call home. So, are the tales true? Is Avalor as magical as it sounds? It sure is. We have enchanted creatures who soar high in the sky. I have a magical scepter. And then there's Zuzo, my spirit fox. He always keeps an eye on me, but I never know where he'll pop up next. <laughs> well, Avalor sounds like a very exciting place. A kingdom a princess can be proud of. It's not always easy, but as crown princess, I swore to protect and defend Avalor. Well, I know you will be wonderful, as long as you believe in yourself and in your dreams. I do. I liked her a lot. I thought her singing could be better, and I think she's probably a good singer. I think she was just very nervous. They probably told her, like, so many little girls are just putting all their faith into you, and if you mess this up, I mean, she probably had a lot of pressure on her that day. So we're gonna go over to Universal Studios for a couple of times in this show because things are going on there where sometimes they're not going on in Disney. This is definitely a 90% Disney show, but we're gonna to go to Universal. Universal opened up a Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. 
it's a really nice restaurant. It's steampunk, and I didn't realize how much I loved steampunk, the whole style, until I went to this restaurant. There's characters, there is Dr. Penelope, hold on, Professor Dr. Penelope Thibaut Tinker Toothsome and her robot Jacques. Let's meet them, and then we'll look at the food a little bit too. I'll go right into the food after you. Uh, we went to this, we went, uh, God, I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. When we had the food, we were with a really nice family that watches my show, the Majewski family. Uh, really nice people. So you're going to see some people during the food segment. And that's them. Hello there. Hello there. How are you all doing today? How are you doing? I'm wonderful. My name is Professor Dr. Penelope Devo Tinkatootsum. Tinkatootsum? Tinkatootsum, yes. I love that. Isn't it lovely? My father was a tinkerer and a dentist. That's what happened. Hello, Jacques. Yeah. We have been waiting for you. Hello there. That's why he Please carries a camera. So. Ed was so excited to be on film. <laughs> right, Jen? <laughs> Hi, Terry. Oh yeah. When you move. When you move, they... This guy is hoping we get these pictures done quick because he's, he's oh, looking at that fine. brisket meatloaf. This is fun. Okay, so the Diz people are here. Yes, we are. We have Craig, we have Oliver, and we have Rhino. <laughs> and we have... Isn't this delicious. amazing? Look at this, that. What, that's a whole slice of key lime in this key lime milkshake right there. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like you get a little you get a little side what order. Is, oh, and then that's that? the cinnamon toast this, crunch. Or, right? I believe this was the bacon you want. No, no, no. Oh. That's the bacon. Ah, that's the bacon. bacon. Hold on, let me taste. I'll right. tell you. <laughs> I'll see you soon, guys. Thank you. That looks amazing. amazing. And sticking with Universal for just a moment, they opened up a new hotel, Sapphire Falls. I think it's one step above the Cabana Bay. If you remember, we did something on the Cabana Bay. But Sapphire Falls, the low Sapphire Falls Resort is really beautiful. Uh, I could definitely see myself staying there for a night or two. Not like a week or two, like a Disney vacation, but I guess you could if you wanted to. It's really beautiful. Look at the pool area. It's really pretty, right? So Disney had PhotoPass Day. This was a day where PhotoPass was free for everyone. And everyone kind of found out about it. They had rare characters at the Magic Kingdom and at Epcot. I went to Epcot. I am now too old and crotchety to park hop. It's just something I don't like to do. To me, it's a, you know, you gotta, to go to another park, you just, it's just an investment. It's a long time. People think like, oh, I'll be there in 10 minutes. No, you won't. If it's the Magic Kingdom, you got like a half hour. So I'm too old and crotchety to park hop. I now stay at one spot. So we went to Epcot and it was great because the rare characters, there were some unannounced rare ones. There was uh, Snow White, but she's usually there, I know, but she was with Dopey, take a peek. <laughs> And probably the best thing was Mushu meeting Mushu. And I was so glad that this guy happened to know what the Big Fat Panda Show was. Did I hear someone ask for a miracle? And then he say, ah! <laughs> Big fat panda. Thank you. Do Mushu. it. Thank you, Mushu. Do it. And our friend April dressed up as the Queen of Hearts, kind of like a cosplay. Oh no, we're not cosplay. What is it? Disney bounding. I get confused between the two. She Disney bounded Queen of Hearts, and she went and met with the Queen of Hearts and Alice. Oh, there she is. <laughs> There's two of you. I'm nervous. <laughs> Should we offer the No. Yes. <laughs> no. No! <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? I don't know. She probably should be on her best behavior, but I don't know about the other two. She didn't have Oh, yeah. Why are there two queens of hearts? I don't know! <laughs> oh, look, they made the hearts. 
Very now, something kind of unexpected that popped up, I mean, it's been out for about a month now. The Gone Mad Party, it's a free dessert party at the Grand Floridian on Wednesday nights. They can cancel this at any time. If it's still going on, try to get there. When I say free, it's free to attend. You pay anywhere from like five to $10 for specialty desserts and drinks. Well worth it though. It's a lot of fun and you get to decide what money to spend. You're not spending $50 on a dessert party that you might eat one cupcake and say, oh, I didn't get my money's worth. So it's over at the Grand Floridian across from the Gasparilla Grill or Gasparilla Games. They might've changed the name of that, the quick service at the Grand Floridian. Meridian. It's not the best view of the fireworks, but it's a nice view. But they set it up really nice. Take a look at the Gone Mad Tea Party. Okay, it's that time of the year again, Halloween. I will be attending Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party this Friday. So it's like the first party coming up. Uh, until then though, I also have to cover Universal Halloween Horror Nights. It's pretty good this year, I'm excited. I am very scared of it, but I get excited. I'm gonna put a time up here that you can skip to. Even though I'm not showing anything blatantly crazy, the images, the screenshots, you know, they can keep you up at night. So skip to this time up above now if you don't wanna hear about Universal Halloween Horror Nights. All right, if you haven't skipped, then you're here. Let's cover it. I have it written down because it's hard to remember all these. Some of the houses that have been announced, or all of the houses that have been announced. Krampus, very excited for Krampus. I loved the little comedy horror movie. Krampus is going to be a house there. Halloween 2, I guess we're gonna be in the hospital. Michael Myers comes home to Haddonfield. And I love Donald Pleasance, if you know anything about Halloween. He's like, Michael Myers is here in this town. He is evil. He's like, overdoes it. I love it. The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, even though to locals it might be like, oh, The Walking Dead again. To people that don't visit that often, they're happy if this is the year they're here and there is The Walking Dead. So there's a house that covers all the seasons for The Walking Dead. The Exorcist. Don't know how they're going to do this as a house, but that's going to be scary. It's just a scary thing. If she starts throwing green puke and split pea soup all over, I'm going to be scared. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know if I can survive this house. I don't want to hear the bzz, bzz, bzz and get chased after by Leatherface, but this is what's going to happen. Then some unknown houses. Ghost Town, you could probably figure out what Ghost Town could be. Maybe it'll just be empty. Tomb of the Ancients, so I guess an Egyptian theme haunted house, and Lunatics Playground 3D. The 3D houses mess me up. They put glasses on you and things are popping out at you while monsters are around. It's just a whole bunch of, I don't know. I get, I like it, but I'm scared of it. So if you skipped over Halloween Horror Nights coverage, you should be back now. We'll, we'll wait for you. Are you back? Okay, for you merchandise people, let's do another segment of Mouseaholics with Corinne Anderson. and welcome back to Mouseaholics. My name is Corinne Anderson and today we are at Disney's Hollywood Studios and we're going to check out some of my favorite picks for the month. So come along. So it may just be August here at Disney World, but the first Halloween party is September 2nd, so we're prepping already. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite Halloween merchandise picks for this month, and we're starting with a brand new mug for this year. Because we love when the merchandise change for every year, and as you can see, this is totally inspired by the Boot to You Parade at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So another of my favorite picks are these new Halloween antenna topper, and this is brand new for 2016. Stitch is a little vampire. These are really good if you're not, you know, in the spendy kind of access to money, and you want to buy some cheaper souvenirs. They're only $5.99, and if you don't have a car, you can always put these on a pen, put them on a keychain, or anything to decorate your bag. Perfect gift, guys. So this is another new pick for this year, and as you can see, it's a Halloween pumpkin luminary. Very cool, it's metal. And then you put a little candle in here. It's for outdoor, indoor decoration. And yes, this is $39.99, so it's a little more for you Halloween fanatics, but it's so, so cute. So as you can see, we're all ready for Halloween here at Disney World. Boo to you and come back next month for even more Disney merchandise. If you want to see Disney merchandise every day, please visit Disney Lifestylers on Instagram. Bye! <laughs> 
let me again mention my exclusive sponsor, David's Vacation Club Rentals. Ah! <laughs> DVCRentals.com. Uh, when you get a chance, go to their YouTube channel. Um, there's stuff from the past. I'm still making stuff for them. On their YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash DVCRentals. I was all ready to make another nighttime video this month, and every time I had it planned, the rain just kept falling down and now we have a tropical storm but in a couple of days I will have another nighttime video there. there's a nighttime series of videos there's room and resort tours there uh, my, one of my favorites if you haven't watched any of the night videos is the contemporary at night and then of course you have you know the daytime videos like I said old Key West all the different rooms a lot of them are the grand villas the one bedrooms the studios take a look and then go to dvcrentals.com use their price calculator put your dates in there are no hidden fees or anything like that and you'll see exactly how much that would cost going through dvcrentals.com you might be amazed the prize for this month is back to the big fat panda shirt you can get black you can get white you can get ladies there's a ladies version also all you have to do in order to be in for the prize is to make sure you subscribe to bigfatpanda.com the youtube channel give this video here a thumbs up and put any comment at all it could be the letter a it doesn't matter what the content of the comment is although i love to hear what you think of the show good or bad in the comments so that i can use that and i love to hear of course good things but whatever you can put in the comments that will make it that we will randomly pick someone from there to win the prize uh, we will give away two. Uh, one will be for a gentleman and one will be for a lady. And now let's get to our guest, Aaron Wallace. And I'm here with Aaron Wallace. Hello. I'm going to give you the panda hug. Oh, awesome. Thank you, sir. What an honor. <laughs> uh, I'll give a bigger one later. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you, like me, have a childhood love of Disney. Yes. Where did it come from? What's like your first... Remember, give me Aaron, baby Aaron. Oh gosh. I think from an absurdly young age, I was not only a Disney fan, but I was like hyper aware of Disney like as a brand and what is and is not Disney. Um, you grew up in Orlando? No, I grew up in North Carolina. Okay, so um, that's... In a family of like casual Disney fans in the way that everyone's a Disney fan. So I, I don't even exactly know where it came from, but uh, it's kind of an embarrassing story. So I applied for the Disney college program when I was in college. And I remember during my interview, I said the corniest thing ever. I said, uh, I was raised on a diet of Disney, <laughs> which, is only, which is only quality. Oh yeah, I got in. I ended oh, up not worked. doing it for, um, cause it wouldn't work with my major, but, uh, long story short, it worked, but it was corny, but it's, I think it kind of sums up the way I think about my early Disney fandom is I was just like consuming so much of it. Do you remember the TV show or was it cartoons and movies or? Because uh, I remember that like the wonderful world of something would come yeah. on at some point. It was everything. But I'm a little older. I mean, you know, it was VHS movies. It was um, best of Disney cassette tapes. It was the storybooks, the read-along storybooks. Um, going to the movies, uh, going to Disney World from a young age. I mean, it was all of it. So I was never just a Disney movies fan, just a parks fan. I was sort of all things Disney from day one. Okay, so now you live in Orlando. Yes. Did that have to do with the parks? Like for me, it had to do with the parks. I mean, definitely. I, I think, I don't know, I just felt called to come here. Okay, and you know, so I, I got the book deal at the time that I decided to move here. So it sort of gave me a reason to do what I already wanted to do. Okay, so speaking sense. of book deal, you're a writer. Yes. Let me see if I get this. It's the Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World? Yeah, and then there's a colon. Okay. <laughs> Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom. It's a mouthful. Okay, so I'm, we're being, I'm we're being specific. Yes. And we're going to do a Thinking Man's Guide to Walt Disney World colon Epcot. Yeah, Fan's Guide. But yes. Fan, fan's Guide. <laughs> oh, I messed it up. No, okay, okay. So when I submitted the book, it was with the title The Thinking Man's Guide, but I put in my proposal, I don't like it because it's gendered. And so my oh. publishers came back and said, What about Thinking Fan's Guide? And I was like, Why not? I, I didn't realize it's gendered. But, you know what I noticed? Though? A lot of girls will say to, each, to people, Hey, guys. And they're looking at a group of girls, oh, yeah, so I yeah. don't even think, you know, but man, yeah, fan, okay. Yeah. All right, so I, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't, I have to get the book. Yeah. I'm going to get the book, I promise. And what I like is, I thought, like everybody else, it's another fan guide where they tell me the price of the tickets, the, you know, where the hotels are, but that's not the case. Yeah, so what is exciting about writing books to me is sort of writing in the wild, wild west, right? Like doing a type of book that hasn't been done before. So that was the opportunity with Magic Kingdom, now with Epcot and, and this other book that we can talk about in a minute. But uh, so the idea is, is to look deeper at each ride, each show in Magic Kingdom, for example. And 
start by setting out the history and hopefully illuminating that in a new way, but then peeling it back and looking at maybe it's like a literary origin, like maybe a movie that was adapted in, or a book to a movie to a ride, but then peeling back it again and saying, well, what is it really that's going on here that makes us love this attraction? So Jungle Cruise, what is it about Jungle Cruise that makes us you know, laugh, not only at the ride, but like really we're laughing at ourselves? And then why is that important? Like how does that feed into this sense of like Disney euphoria that we okay, get? So, I love that premise because I firmly believe that enough people don't stop to smell the roses. Yeah. They get on the ride, they get off, they go to the next attraction, they have no idea what really went into that ride and why it's so different. Right. Like the the history behind it, the story behind it. Why Walt decided to do this and this. So you go into that stuff. Yeah, because the whole, you know you everyone understands the feeling you have when you leave Magic Kingdom at the end of the night. And but it's like that doesn't happen by accident. And we all understand that the details matter at Disney. But like, what like what is it about those details that's connecting with us? You know. I and agree. so that's what the book is really trying to like put its finger on. I agree. And something like the Haunted Man, just my favorite attraction is the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. The amount of I think non-story story that we put into it that's yes. really not there. It's like a bunch of stuff thrown up against the wall, but we gave it a story or or some of it's there with Constance and uh, and some of the name like apparently the names, Gus, Ezra, and whatever, are yeah, yeah, fan yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Disney kinda went with them because right. they put them in the graveyard. It's a Yeah, big... and I love that when like fan made fiction like becomes part of the narrative. But it's it's so funny that you sort of put your finger on that for Haunted Mansion because that's kind of what the book talks about is is how you know that ride takes suspense elements from like mystery novels and it's this the intrigue of the unknown right like you go in and you don't really know the story you just find the aftermath you're almost like crime scene investigators going in there yes. and then it's like trying to piece these incredibly rich details together into a narrative and like we do that work not the imagineers necessarily and that's what's so fascinating what's great is there's comic books and stuff coming out too now that yeah, are yeah. trying to kind of put it together, and there's so many different ones that it's, again, it's all alternate reality based yeah, and yeah. stuff. I think that's yeah. amazing. Um, Keith Lappening, do you know with, uh, oh, yeah. Adam, with yeah. Adam? With Adam? Uh, yes, with the, yeah. He's, he, the gonna, beast. It's not, <laughs> Adam is not the name of the beast, I promise you, but there's like Fisher Price toys that went and put Adam as, as the name because it's so into the lore now that we made it up. Yeah. All right, yeah, so, like, I, I have to get this because I, like, I've always looked at Splash Mountain and I know it's, uh, Song of the South based that movie but there's still so much more to it that I yeah I would like to learn about all right so then now the Epcot book where that's got to be so hard for you to now find the the special things about everything that's at Epcot yeah well so that was tackling Epcot was a little bit intimidating at first for two reasons uh, one is that whereas no one had really done a book all about Magic Kingdom solely and like in depth about Magic Kingdom. But there are lots of books about Epcot, lots of great books about Epcot. So already there's a challenge in finding new territory there. And then like it's kind of the Thinking Fans theme park, you know? And so I'm writing the Thinking Fans Guide. And so I wanted you to kind be of, a step ahead I of wanted to step my game up, you know, like challenge myself. And um, it's been a long creative process, but I'm so thrilled with what has come out of it because the cool thing about Epcot is not only do you have all these different sort of like subjects coming together, you know, science, history, you know, geography, culture, um, but there are also these kind of fan-made controversies that exist within the park, right? So like, when is it appropriate, if ever, for intellectual property or Disney characters to be in Epcot? When yeah. should celebrities be hosts? Should corporations be sponsors? Can a future world attraction ever be set somewhere other than the future? And so it's really cool to address those issues with like using the rides as the tools to answer awesome. them. So. I can, now I am much more excited to read books, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're also an avid movie critic. Yeah. You write yeah. for other people? Yeah, so I, I got started back in 2003 with UltimateDisney.com. Uh, that was kind of my gateway oh, into and the... Oh, let's, let's also mention Aaron Wallace Online is you. Yeah, Aaron Wallace Online. AaronWallaceOnline.com, I'm com. putting it up there. Oh, that's what... <laughs> that's what's up there now. What color is it? Uh, orange. You're right. Oh, red? No, is it red? Is it's, it's red, red now. It's red now. Sorry. <laughs> Editing. Thanks. It's, it's good magic. Thing. Some people magic. say a lot of different colors, and then when I go to edit, I'm like, oh, I want to get it. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so now, I'm sorry, now let's go to who else you, you wrote for, because I can put that up there, too. Yeah, UltimateDisney.com, which is now DVDizzy.com. I got started with them back in 2003. Uh, you know, they're the most accessed website for Disney movies, like, and so it was just a huge honor and break to get to write for them, and I ended up becoming sort of the 
head writer other than the, the actual webmaster of the site, a guy named Luke Bonanno, who's a fantastic film critic. Uh, and it was a great learning experience and, and a great networking opportunity to sort of get to meet so many other people in the Disney fan community. Um, but that is where I got to foster my love for movies and Disney movies. I just read your Jungle Book. Uh, does it? Yeah, Jungle Book. I keep, I always, today I've been messing up Jungle Book and Jungle Cruise. Jungle Book. And I agree with you, the, the kid, wow, he give him, give him the Oscar now. Yes. Is great, and to know that he was hugging plastic cardboard and teddy bears, but yet acting still, you got to give it to that kid. Yeah. He had a a wisdom that came from like experiencing adult life that he has not experienced yet. Yeah, it it really blows my mind. I mean, it, it's sophisticated acting that he's doing, and I don't know if he's aware or even could be aware of the sophistication. And he just part of the credit goes to the director for that too. You know, to get that performance out of out of uh, a child actor, but. I mean, I came away very impressed. Give me a, if you can remember, because lately Disney's been hitting them out of the park. Do you have a recent Disney movie that you didn't quite like so much? Uh, the BFG, that's very recent. Oh, and I didn't see that one. Yeah. You'd get, without giving me too many spoilers, but by the time the show's actually, we can spoil <laughs> it, go ahead. Tell me what overall you did not like, because I didn't even see that one. Uh, well, <laughs> a friend of mine said it stands for a uh, boring, fatigued guy. <laughs> Because really? that's the feeling you walk away with. But oh. I, and, and listen, I love Roald Dahl, oh. and I was always sort of partial to the story, and I love Spielberg, and the, and the movie does feel very Spielbergish, and I love that he's working with Disney again. So it had so much going for it, and I, I was hopeful for it, but uh, it, it falls flat. And, and saying this, I know you've probably got viewers who love the movie. So, I'm sure. Uh, but for me, you know, I, there was no... I couldn't connect at all. At all. But Disney has this thing in the last few years, you may have noticed, where the, the trailers tend to be a little deceptive. Yeah, oh, uh, Maleficent. Yeah, Maleficent. I thought she was going to be mean throughout the whole thing, and no. And she... Frozen turned out to not be oh, the Olaf yeah. fest that the commercials made it look like it would be, and uh, you know, Tangled looked like it was going to be Flynn Rider the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so often it's not what they've packaged it to be in the commercials. So maybe okay. we're in for a pleasant surprise. I hope so. Something I forgot to address with you, yeah. and I think going back to your books, you have the book that's out now, The Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World, colon, Magic Kingdom. Yes, good job. And we're coming out with The Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World, colon, Epcot, but there was another one in the middle there that I forgot. Yeah, okay, so, and this this is the one that I think people probably didn't see coming, uh, but it's Hocus Pocus in Focus, <laughs> The Thinking Fan's Guide to Disney's Halloween Classic. And of course, it's about The Shining. Okay. <laughs> Hocus, the Shining Hocus, comes up. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, very briefly. Hocus, very but briefly. that's just funny that yeah, <laughs> I have to find out why in the world now that would happen. Okay, Hocus Pocus in Focus. Yeah. So this is an in-depth book all about the 1993 Disney witch comedy Hocus Pocus starring Bette Midler. Uh, and again, I told you I like writing in the Wild Wild West. And I, I think that a lot of people's reaction will be like, you wrote a whole, mo a whole book about Hocus Pocus. And I love that. Like, I want that skepticism because I I was even surprised myself when I started on the project to, to realize how deep the movie is and how much there is that's like lot. interesting. I think just the three actresses alone have enough. Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. Well, and there's so there's a lot of like kind of edgy material in the movie. And I think the fact that like the kids of my generation, you know, in 1993 were sort of caught off guard by that, but it was marketed to us as a Disney film. I think that explains why now there's this like resurgence in popularity for the movie. So I'm just having like fun looking at this movie in all of its absurdity and in all of its seriousness. I think, I think with the new Castle Stage show, you have enough fans out there that will like this book. People love this movie, and it's yeah. like Disney was the last to realize how much people love this movie, but they finally caught on board. And so there's a whole chapter in the book about the villain spectacular show at Magic Kingdom. Okay, by the way, when that first came out, I really thought for a second, you saw it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really thought that for a second, just a second, <laughs> that Bette Midler had come for the first night. And then it took me. It took me couple minutes to go, oh no, this woman's too young, but right? Uncanny. First? Yeah. And all, well, all three of them, the first night I went, I was blown away. Now, I know they had different actresses, so I don't know if they were all um, such dead ringers or doppelgangers, but I mean, they were vocally in terms of the aesthetic, their ability to, to move. The and I think they're coming back this year. The same ones? Oh, that's I good. I heard that. And I that's believe encouraging. The, the lady who played the Bette Midler, the one that I'm saying, yeah. was from Vegas, that she was oh, really? a Bette Midler impersonator, not wow. necessarily a Bette Midler witch impersonator. Yes. You know, that character, what's, I don't remember. Winifred Sanderson. Winifred. Yeah. Uh, but she became, you know, obviously she was able yeah, to yeah. do it. I always try to do little skits and, and this one went nowhere, but I wanted to do Bernie Sanderson. 
<laughs> right? I, it would have please, been funny. Please I do that. Can't, I think it's done and over with. And no, I don't have the not. money for whatever makeup I would need. Just for Bernie, and then somebody has Bernie, and then uh, I would say, and it probably is too political, but it would have been funny to have Bernie Sanders. Make a separate YouTube show for your I, like political Disney skits. <laughs> Bernie Sanderson. Okay, so the Magic Kingdom book, I can buy it right now if I wanted to. Amazon, where else? Bookstores, anywhere. Is it digital? Uh, yeah, ebook. Yeah. I can get it on the iBook store? Yeah, yeah. So Apple, I will have it Kindle, before. Yeah, any of that. Okay. And then when can I get the other two? So uh, they're up for pre order right now. Uh, so you can go to AaronWallaceOnline.com. And, yep, there you go. And uh, you can whatever get. whatever color I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, uh, you can pre order Hocus Pocus or Epcot separately or together as a package. You can get exclusive early when access, do we signed it to copies. Be delivered if we pre -order? Uh, so uh, looking at first week of September for Hocus oh, Pocus, so you. in time for the full brunt of the Halloween season, uh, and then Epcot probably like early December. Awesome. Uh, do you plan more books? Are there any in the? Oh yeah. Listen, I've got a hundred book ideas floating around in my head. So okay, when the next uh, one comes out, will you come back? Oh, absolutely. I'd be honored. Good, because I really if need, I need content, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is fun. And there you have it, show number 38. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, next month is gonna be chock full of Halloween stuff uh, from Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I probably will also have stuff from Halloween Horror Nights, uh, other Halloween happenings, and slowly we're gonna get into my favorite time of the year, Christmas. I cannot wait. I'm really excited for Christmas. I can't believe it's, I know it's still early, but it, for me, because I'm talking about it and things are coming out in the park, it feels like, you know, yay, I'm getting back to that stuff. Once again, if you, a family member, a loved one, a friend, seriously are planning a trip to Walt Disney World, take a look at my exclusive sponsor, David's Vacation Club Rentals. <laughs> DVCRentals.com. Um, again, I, I said it before, but just in case you didn't watch the whole thing, which would be very bad, go to DVCRentals.com. There's a price calculator there. You tell them what resort you want to stay, what room type, put in your dates. That's the exact price you'd pay. No hidden fees or anything like that. So if you want to find out what it costs before you make a phone call, do that. Otherwise, call them. Discuss it with them. Uh, so let's see. Go forth. Create pandemonium. And please keep giving out those panda hugs. This world needs it now more than ever. I can say that every month. It's not getting worse. But keep giving out those panda hugs. Make things better. Until next time, panda out. <laughs>